Ricardo Califiori, Lenny Euro, Ross Barkley. The transfer window has been heating up. It is sizzling right now. And there's only more to come, but we're gonna be going through every single Premier League transfer so far this summer. And we're gonna be ranking them. We have unbelievable for the best bits of business. We have decent for the decent bits of business. We have who has watched him, because there's a number of players here that no one's actually watched. We have bad, yeah, they're fairly self-explanatory. They might be bad. And we have Kepa, Kepa Eritha Belaga. The worst possible tier there is for any transfer. And before we get into it, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe. Let's get into the video. First up, we've got Jewsbury Hall, my club, the Chelsea. What do I think of Jewsbury Hall? I'm actually, I'm actually quite excited about Jewsbury Hall. Not just because he fits the system, not just because the managers work with him, but he's got a bit of technique about him. I've seen him with a cultured left foot at Leicester, and I have a friend, an inside source, who, but he's a Leicester fan. He really rates him, really, really rates him. So, do you know what? People have been skeptical about the transfer. I genuinely think Jewsbury Hall's going in unbelievable. I'll put him in decent, okay? Ricardo Calafiori. This, for me, is a game-changing transfer. I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy is sexy. The guy has got aura, as the kids would say. Or in other words, they may sleep with him. Not the kids, you know what I mean. Fans fancy Calafiori. He's a good looking man. He's an Italian suave bastard. But as a player, he also looks like a very intelligent one and one that really suits that left-hand side for Arsenal. I think Zinchenko is pants. I can't lie to you. And I think this is a massive upgrade in regards to their defense, which is already the best defense in the Premier League. Statistically speaking, this is the type of thing that puts them on a different level. I've tipped Arsenal for the league. Spoiler alert. I know people don't want the league sport for them, but Arsenal are going to win the league. I think Calafiori will be a really good signing in that regard. Next up, we have Archie Gray. He has joined Spurs with Big Ange. Is he going to be cooking on the barbie? What do we think he's going to be fucking doing? What do we think, Archie Gray? See, Leeds fans really rate Archie Gray, and he was decent. He looked really decent for me, and he's only young. 35 million, do I think it's an unbelievable bit of business? Is it transformative for Spurs? I think in the same way of Jewsbury Hall. Jewsbury Hall is obviously a lot older, but like, let's see on Archie Gray. I'm not gonna put him in unbelievable just yet. Now we have Mikel Marino. Now this isn't confirmed, but I'm letting you guys know because me and Fabrizio have been chatting. And Mikel Marino is going to Arsenal. That is done, confirmed. Here we go, guys. That's a bit of business. I'm a decent. I really liked him at Newcastle a few years ago. I know Mike actually got rid of him quick. It was a nice bit of, nice bit of cash, basically, for Cashley. But he looked like a decent player. In the Euros, he popped up with a winner. I think Arsenal need to a bit of help in that midfield, not just in build up with Rice, but the fact that Havertz is a midfielder. Ask Arteta for his dealer's number because how high do you have to be to have looked at Kai Havertz and think that bloke's a midfielder? You wanna get high? I watched every minute of him for three years. I was very patient with him, more so than a lot of Chelsea fans. And I could see that as he can do a job up top, not in my wildest dreams that I think that guy is a midfielder. He's not. Uh, and Mikel Marino is a good signing for that, so I think that's pretty decent. Then we have Ross, his boss. Barkley, and he's back at Villa, but this is a different Ross Barkley. The Ross Barkley that joined Villa in the 1920, uh, the 2021 season, he had that great game uh, at the Emirates, a great game against Liverpool in the 7-2, and kind of tailed off, but that was more of a 10. He was alone from Chelsea then, and he's found joy at Luton last year, one of the best players in the league. I'm not even taking the piss, he really was that. Playing in that double pivot, and I think under Emery, he's actually going to excel. I'm putting Ross in unbelievable. Ross is back in the Champions League. He's back playing Champions League football <laughs> before Chelsea are. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's not good. It's not looking good, Brev. It's not looking good, Brev. But we do have someone who's returned home to Fulham in Ryan Sessegnon. He's left Spurs. Didn't really do anything at Spurs. Did anyone see him at Spurs? I'm just going to put him who's watched him because he did really well at Fulham, went to Spurs, and then no one saw him again. So I think he belongs there. That makes sense for me. Now we have... Elliot Anderson at 35 million. Now, if I told you, viewers, if I said to you, is that Longstaff or is that Elliot Anderson? Answer me truthfully. Do you really know that's Elliot Anderson? Are you sure it's not one of the Longstaffs? Because I'm not. But I'm going with it. It's Elliot Anderson at 35 million. Sorry, you can get better for that, Forrest. They've, Newcastle have had your pants down. He's not a bad player by any means. He does a decent job in the same way that like, Jacob Murphy does a decent job at Newcastle. But for me... I don't know. Elliot Anderson at 35 million. I think it's quite nuts. Then we have Lenny Euro, 60 million pounds, 18 year old, one of the most highly rated centre backs on the planet. 
and no one's fucking watched him. Let's be honest, let's call a spade a spade. And we're not even going to see him for another three months. So actually, guys, we need to all go watch Lil games so we can have an understanding of the player that Leda Euro is at centre-back because he's actually injured for the next three months. So maybe we should put him in the Kepa. I'm not going to put him in the Kepa because he could be a really talented boy. Obviously, Real Madrid were interested in him and they are not interested in players who are absolute rubbish. So for Manchester United, it could be one of those ones that ends up being unbelievable. It could be a Kepa. Let's see. I don't think anyone's watched enough of him to you know, truly judge him in that regard. Ian Matson. Now, I've watched enough of him, but as a winger at Chelsea. And at Dortmund, obviously, he did really well. I think he suits being a wingback more than a fullback. So it's not who has watched him because we've watched him. But you know how this is the middle ground? I think people think Matson's better than he is. Definitely in terms of a back four. And at Emery with Aston Villa. Somewhere in here. I'm going to put him in who has watched him. But you guys know that also kind of means average. Max Kilman. Max Kilman, £40 million. Very decent at Wolves. Very decent defender. Suits West Ham. I, I feel like West Ham's transfer strategy. A lot of the players they're buying. I'm kind of like, Moyes could have cooked with this though. Couldn't he? Uh, Lopetegui did a good job. Maybe it's Lopetegui's guy at Wolves. I don't mind it. 40 million though. All right, let's 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 change who has watched him. To who has watched him slash average. <laughs> I'm going to have to change the tier list only a bit of the way through because it makes more sense. But yeah, I'm going to put Max Kilman there just because I think it's a lot of money for him like if Lenny Yorick goes on to be one of the best centre backs in the world and they pay 20 million more than Max Kilman at the same time Lenny Yorick could be here so who knows now we have this guy the milky bar kid Lucas Bergval who played in your garden in your garden so you guys should know better than me because he didn't play in my garden he played in your garden so I don't really know in he goes we have Jorgensen Chelsea's new keeper we buy a lot of keepers mainly because this Fucking bastard was so bad. We've spent as m less on the last like four keepers than we have just on that useless, poppadom handed, chocolate wrists melt who'd let in screamers for, for oh, oh that man has that man has cost me years of my life and I'm getting Vietnam esque PTSD flashbacks just thinking about him. I have to put him in who's watched him. From what I've seen, he concerns me a little bit. At 20 million, let's see, guys. I've heard good things from FM, if that's any consolation, Chelsea fans. Now we have the man that transformed his career by coming from Chile. It's Ben Brereton Diaz. I mean, that guy could hit you with a five-star frog splash off the top rope, and it would make so much sense. No way, no way, no way, no but he's actually a striker. He was at Sheffield United for the second half of last season, didn't do a lot. Now he's at Southampton, so another red and white team. Bad. I know he scored a lot of goals in the championship, his move abroad to Spain hasn't really worked out. Didn't do a lot at Sheffield United. Definitely didn't help keep them up, did he? Seven million, Southampton. I think it's bad. Flynn Downs. Average. Mm, maybe decent. Flynn Downs hasn't looked bad from what I've seen, even at West Ham. But it's important for Southampton to keep some of their core from coming up. I don't have high hopes for them this season. But... Mm, I put them in average. I put them in average. Adam Lalana, Southampton. Do you know why? I'm sorry, guys. I'm putting this in decent. I'm not putting this in decent because necessarily I think Adam Lallana is going to do loads at Southampton. I think he's a good influence in the regards of experience that he can bring to the dressing room. That kind of aspect. However, this sort of transfer warms my heart. He's gone back home. It's been a long time since we saw Adam Lallana in a Southampton shirt. Which is arguably when he was at his best, I would say. Or his most fun to watch. So, I like it. It's one of those ones where I reckon as a fan, I'd like to see Adam back at Southampton. We then have another Southampton signing. Ronathan Edwards, or Ronnie Edwards, as his friends would call him. I think he's going to be decent. He's He's been very highly rated for a number of years at Peterborough. I remember, I think we even had links to him a few years ago. Even if this isn't the best buy in the immediate, and maybe it takes a bit of time to acclimatise to the Premier League, I think he's one of those ones that's a good bit of business for Hampton from maybe a potential profit point of view in the future, but also just to, if they go down, he'll do well in the Championship sort of buy. Oh, Wolves bought this dude. Wolves bought this dude. Wolves bought this dude. Wolves bought this dude from Portugal, which is the most Wolves thing ever. So it's going in unbelievable just for prime Barclays in this. I mean, Wolves buying Portuguese players as a staple of Premier League football. What are you talking about? You, my friend, Harwood. I haven't watched enough of you, if I'm honest. I th Burnley were pretty pants last year, but I feel a bit harsh putting him in anywhere else. Milenkovic from Fiorentina, bought by Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest, they like spending. I know that FFP have been hot on their asses, but they don't really care, do they? He's going and who's watched him because no one's watched him other than Fiorentina fans and the odd Serie A watcher, but I can't pretend to you guys I've watched loads of Milinkovic. I'm just not. I'm not going to bullshit you. You're good You're good people. Better than the content creators that will just 
pollute your mind with rubbish about players they haven't seen. Then the Euro. We already know we haven't watched him, so we'll just make them a pair of twins. The twins? The fucking twins. I don't know why they're in there twice. Poor from me. But we have Joshua Xerxy, who hasn't been in here twice. Another Manchester United signing. Obviously excelled at Bologna last season. Bit of a kind of middle of the ground between a number nine and a ten, really, to be honest, as a player. But he did really well. Obviously helped get them Champions League. I only saw bits and bobs. From what I've seen, he looks like quite a tidy player. Alternative to Hoyland. And Hoyland's out injured at the moment. So, do you know what? He's going in the decent. I feel harsh on the kid, Lenny Euro, by the way. But obviously it's because he's injured and who's watched him. Whereas... I watched a little bit of him, so I can, I can get away with this one. Just because I was intrigued about Thiago Motta's football, to be honest. We then have Emil Smith-Rowe, who's joined Fulham. Now, Smith-Rowe hasn't really kicked a football in about three years, it feels like. But 35 million. I think Arsenal have done well to get 35 million for Smith-Rowe. I thought he was a decent player that helped keep Arteta in his job for a period. But I didn't think much past that. He carries the ball well. Can add a bit of goal threat. Does get a lot of injuries. I think bad. I honestly, I I think it's bad business. I know, I know, Arsenal fans absolutely love Smith Rowe to bits, probably because of the song as well and the fact he kept Arteta's job. But I think from Fulham's point of view, is he what they need? Is losing your Palinias, your Mitrovic's, William, Deckard over Reed, is Smith Rowe what they need? And I don't think he is because I don't think he'll be available enough. So he's going there. Lewis Hall. Now, Lewis Hall technically is last summer. Newcastle got him in for loan, but the buy is only confirmed now. I just wanted to throw him in because I think he's that fucking good. Uh, I, I think it's a mistake in terms of Chelsea selling him. I think he's very talented, very calm on the ball, can play midfield, can play left back. I think a left back in the modern game, he's very suited. And I actually think Lewis Hall is really going to play a lot more football in Newcastle and people are going to see what he's about. Newcastle also signed a keeper who I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. He's going in there. I don't get why they've signed this keeper from Forest in the Kepa bin. Now we have Savinho, City's only signing so far this summer. I don't think that will remain the case. I don't think anyone would believe that would remain the case, unless they don't beat their case. But Savinho's come in, obviously Girona, so had the you know the City links anyway, that probably helps. But he had an impressive season. Girona had a really good season, his numbers are good. They could do with the winger, so I don't I think as a bit of business it makes sense from City's point of view. Gives them a bit more options, especially if players like Bernardo are always linked with the move, but are they gonna go, are they not? Doku isn't quite the polished article yet, so I actually think let's put him in decent. Next, another wide option that City may have even looked at because he was tearing up the championship last season. Leeds may not have come up, but he he was on the come up. He excelled for Leeds, he absolutely starred my friend Plute, shout out Plute. He waxes lyrical about this guy, Somerville. He's got his move to West Ham. He's going in unbelievable for me. He looked impressive even in the Premier League before, but last season he really kicked on. His numbers are impressive. But in terms of performances, I remember when they played Leicester, a number of games where you just whack it on. You know it's Championship Friday night. It's always a perfect time to watch it. Leeds are on quite a fair amount, despite me not thinking Daniel Fark is the best manager in the world. I didn't know what the fuck he was doing there. Somerville did. He did know what he was doing there. And he knows what he's doing here, because I don't think a move to West Ham's bad. Like The idea of West Ham with Somerville... Kudus, Bowen, behind potentially full Krug, that stinks of prime Barclays to me. And I'm a fan. They also signed Gil Gilherm? Gilherm? Who's watched him? <laughs> Milenkovic, why are you here again? I haven't watched you. I have not watched you. This is a mess, lads. They're screwing me here. They're, they are screwing me. And I. Oh my, the next three we've already done. This video is long enough as it is. We don't need to. We don't need to be seeing all this. Batawu. Now, Leicester have kept hold of him. I think that was important for them to keep hold of him in terms of if they want to try and stay up. It's going to be tough, particularly if they have a points deduction as well. But it's a decent signing. And as is Deckard over Reed. I can't understand why Fulham have sold him. I think he does a done a decent job at Craven Cottage over the years. He even did a decent job at Cardiff. But Leicester have pounced. They've taken him for five million odd. I think that's a good buy. That makes sense to me. Muric, on the other hand bad I think he's uh, no do you know what he had a few Kepper moments last season he had a sensational game against Chelsea but what keeper doesn't Muric for the rest of the time wasn't exactly great don't get me wrong I think he's better than Trafford because I think Trafford is absolutely pants I think Trafford is a Kepper but Muric you're not far off a Kepper for that reason you're staying there then we have Rory Delap Prime Barclays he had a son the product of my semen is my son's shame Liam Delap, who's City's Academy. He's now signed for Southampton, I believe. <laughs> it's Ipswich. Guys, I promise I know what I'm talking about. Like and subscribe. I, I do. I'm not familiar with it. Oh, look, at, it's a lot of business, all right? We've got, picture, we've got so many pictures of players. We've got more pictures of players. We've got more of them. 
you know, I'm confused. There's a lot to there's a lot of play here. But for Ipswich, look, he's he's been okay on his loans. I don't I don't know. City's Academy's good. I don't think he's a bad player from what I've seen. But is it enough for Ipswich? Because someone like Amari Hutchinson, I think, is a decent buy for Ipswich. He really excelled last year. He was homegrown profit for Chelsea, so I can't complain. But I also think that's someone who settled at Portman Road. It makes sense in retaining. But they're buying a lot of championship players. Not the championship players can't translate, but there is a little bit of a risk there. I like what McKenna's been doing at Ipswich, and it's hard to question their policy when it's taken them back-to-back promotions. It's hard to question in that regard. But I'm going to a little bit because I'm a football fan. And the dude from Hull that they signed. I haven't seen enough of him. Can't lie, I know he's highly rated. O'Brien up next. And this bit of transfer business makes so much sense to me. It's Everton, it's an Irish player, it's Coleman vibes. Or it's even even Brantford being at PSV and this guy being from uh, Lyon, despite being, you know, well, Brantford's English, obviously, but this guy's Irish. However, it just makes sense. It's a bit of amazing Everton business. I know the guy's highly rated. Equally, I could put him in who has watched him because I haven't watched anywhere near enough of O'Brien. But Everton, as at the transfer, this just makes so much sense to me. Jack Harrison. Rubbish. I think he's pants. Jack Harrison in 2024, Everton. Come on. I know you're getting him alone again, but they can do better than that. But they have got Lindstrom. Now, Lindstrom, I think, will be a decent bit of business. I know he struggled at Napoli, but he really excelled before at Frankfurt. He's a highly rated winger. I think he will excel and do more than Harrison will. Despite Harrison being a bit more deitchy, I don't know. I just feel like Lindstrom is a good bit of business. I remember H hyping him up last summer and it didn't quite work out. It works out in my eyes, okay? Lindstrom is going to do well. What I say goes. <laughs> then we got Lewis Dobbin, who's left Everton to go to Aston Villa. And I actually rate it because Dobbin scored against Chelsea, so he can't be that bad. But I'm putting him bad, all right? His name's Dobbin. He's not going to be that... It's not that good. He scored against us because we were rubbish at the time. Lewis Dobbin, it doesn't make sense as a move for me. That's just my opinion. Name's gone from my head. It's been a long day, guys. It's been a long list. Kamada joining Crystal Palace from Lazio on a free. I think decent bit of business. Palace don't really do bad business. Dougie Friedman has obviously had a really good time recruiting there. I think they're going to excel even more under Glasner as they showed on the back end of last season. I think Kamado will be a good bit of business for Palace. So, yeah, I'm going to rate it in the decent category. And now we have Vega, another bit of Chelsea business. I'm not going to pretend to have watched loads of Basil. I haven't. I can't lie to you. But I like what we've done in terms of hiring the guy that they bought to replace Calafiori when they got rid of him. So I don't mind that as a bit of business strategy, but at the same time, I can't pretend I've seen much more than him other than he has nice hair, so he's going in there. And I'm dropping bars. But we do have Tosin, who I've watched a lot more of, and including pre-season so far for Chelsea, and I've been really impressed. Decent, composed player, gives us a bit of height and physicality, and we need that. Even at centre-back, our centre-backs aren't the biggest guys in the world. I know Baddy Ashiel is, but he's not very good in the air, whereas Tosin has a lot better win percentage in terms of his headers. And also, he just looks chilled on the ball. He looks like he's got all the time in the world. The guy can make minutes out of seconds. That is a Tosin trait, and that is why he's going in the decent. I think it'll be a good free, free bit of business. This guy, however, this is purely shirt sales that no one's seen. No one's watched this guy, but we lost Pulisic, so they probably thought, you know what? We need to buy some Americans, buddies. And they bought this dude. They bought Wiley. You could have bought you could have bought actual Wiley. You could have bought Eskimo boy. You know, you could have you could have been wearing my Rolex, but you've bought this Caleb Wiley. I don't know. We'll, we'll stick him in there. No one's watched him. <laughs> he could be in here, but I don't know. Shirt sales, maybe it's a good thing. And we've also signed Gooey. Or Goo. Um Gooey looks alright, to be honest. And from what I've heard from other Barcelona fans, he is all right. He's actually not a bad player. He's a decent player. And in that regard, I'm going to put him in decent. I'm not going to put him in unbelievable. And I haven't, I can't say I've watched loads and loads of him, but from what I've seen in preseason, I quite like him as a player. Let's see. I'll put him in decent. I'm being a bit more hopeful with the Chelsea ones, maybe. Because as for Kelly Man, 20 million on Kelly Man. Mate. Oh, look. I hope he might be a really talented kid and he might go on to do great things at Chelsea. And I really hope he does. But for now, I look at it as a bit of cooking the books. Do you know what I mean? We give you Matson, you you give us Kelly Man. I don't think Kelly Man will touch... I don't, Kelly Man won't start a game for Chelsea 
all season. Maybe in the Conference League. He won't start a Premier League game all season, I wouldn't think. I haven't seen enough of him, but as a bit of business, 20 million on him. I, I don't see why that was necessary. It's going in Kepa. I can't lie. Raya. Now, Raya, a bit like Lewis Hall, is someone who was loaned last season, but is technically bought this season. I think Raya's in the average. And I'll tell you why. I just think Arsenal's defence is so good. But Arsenal have kept buying keepers in recent years. And I think they will have to buy another one again. I think with Jorgensen, it's kind of like one of them ones. I don't know. Raya's distribution's decent. I don't think he's an amazing keeper. I think there's a number of times he got beaten by crosses quite a lot last season. I know people will throw stats in my face. You little stat shaggers. But I'm talking about Mudrick lobbing in with the cross. Newcastle, where he was pathetic on that goal, where everyone was complaining about the foul for. The keeper was dreadful on it. I don't know. I'm not sold on Raya as a keeper. I think Arsenal could do better there. And for that reason, he's going average for me. This dude, nice curly hair. No one's watched enough of him, let's be honest, in Holland. And this dude, I don't think people have watched enough of him. I'm putting him there. We're rattling through. I'm sorry, we're going to have to rattle. <laughs> I know he's at Atalanta, so I've seen bits of bobs. I can't say I've seen enough. I really can't. Minter, on the other hand, I've seen a lot of clips from. I know Newcastle fans rated him really highly and were actually a bit gutted at his sale, obviously FFP related to Brighton. Uh, and Brighton do good business a lot of the time. So I'm actually going to put Minter in unbelievable business. Just because the fact that Newcastle fans were that concerned about losing a player like that, I don't know if it's just because Almiron is a bit of a weak winger. Maybe they saw an upgrade in that. Not that he plays specifically on the right side. I just think... 30 million. If Brighton's dropping 30 million, he's probably a decent player. So he's he's my kind of outside shout, just from clips I've seen. I'm not going to... Again, I could be whacking him here. I'm just basically exposing that I watch a lot of Premier League football and Champions League and then Europa. You know what I mean? I watch, I watch European competition, Premier League, and I watch bits and bobs of other leagues. But I'm, I don't lie. And that's what's important here, guys. There's too many people pretending to watch everything. Let's be fair. But we do have this dude who Palace have signed from Barcelona. Can't say I've seen enough. I've seen a bit of Gooey, but I can't say I've seen enough. <laughs> but we do have Sinistera, who's joined Bournemouth. I think that's a good buy. I think Sinistera's looked decent from what I've seen. I think it'll be a good sign for Bournemouth. This guy, I haven't seen enough of him. But he's got aura. I feel like he's got aura. We're putting him in decent. He looks cool, doesn't he? And that's a cool kit. I don't know why he'd leave that club. Mate, I have shot too high with some of these because I cannot remember. There's too big a list. I cannot remember all these players. But I will put Philogen in decent because he looked exciting in the championship. Obviously, everyone saw that goal that was a deflected effort. Probably went down as an own goal, actually. But it was really cool. You know, Rabona, a bit of skill. Looks like a fun player. Excelled at Hull. I'm putting him in decent. I think it's a cool signing for Villa. And as is Illing Jr., so but not quite that. I don't know. I'd seen more of him at Juve because I think a couple of years ago, shout out Juve fan, Luca, he actually put me on to him in terms of, well, he didn't put me on to him, not like that, guys. But you know what I mean? He he told me about him and rated him really highly. And I watched bits and pieces of him and I was reasonably impressed, but not sold. And for that reason, I'm putting him in average, not even who's watched him. It's a case of that, that average. I don't know. I don't know. Losing Douglas Louise in that deal... And getting him, I don't think that was good business from Villa at all. This dude from Juve, I haven't watched him. Cameron Archer, however, I have watched. And I don't mind him as a player, you know. I know he scored, actually, in returning to Villa Park. And he crashed from off the bar or whatever. But I, I feel like he's an average. Just sort of backup player to Villa. Could be an alright one for the squad. Might even work his way into decent. Might even be bad, but we're going to have to put him in average. I'm kind of sitting on the fence with a lot of these guys. I know there's splinters up my arse, but at the moment, the window's not finished. There's, there's a lot more to happen. You can feel it cooking. People are making their sales, and then the season approaches, and people start panicking, and then they need their players in quick. And I feel like that's where it really starts to take off. This is just what we got so far. This dude, haven't seen enough of him. And this dude. I'm just going to go with that for now. I feel like you guys are probably sick of me just saying, oh, I haven't seen this player. I don't fucking know. All right? We don't know about everyone. We've got these guys in unbelievable. Pick of the bunch for me is Calafiori because I think that's so transformative in terms of winning Arsenal the league. I think it's a massive sign in that regard. Decent. My boy Juice, he's going to he's gonna rock up. He's going to rock out with his cock out at the bridge. Well, prob he probably won't do that because I feel like he'd probably be arrested quite promptly. But you get my point. He's going he's gonna to excel. We like that. And so are these boys. Maybe not. I don't know. Gooey might. Maybe we should move Gooey down. Sorry, Gooey. Boo! <laughs> he has to get. He has to go down there. I can't be going that nuts about him. Really, anything to go off other than preseason and a friend's opinion. So yeah, we've got all of these boys. Not too many bad. Not too many in the Kepa pile. Prove me wrong, Kelly man. Prove me wrong. But for now, that's how we're leaving it, and we will revisit this when there are more transfers going on as it goes on. But I thought it'd be quite fun to kind of take a little. 
a little browse of what's been going on because there's so many you forget about it and there's so many you think I don't even fucking know who that is so it's good to know eh? anyway hit like hit subscribe all that stuff helps me out a lot I, I really do appreciate it I appreciate the love on the channel at the moment by the way and there's going to be a lot more to come throughout this season going into the season we've got some big ideas and we're going to be cooking so you know this is the place to be anyway in a bit guys up the chels